downpour notwithstanding, Manchester left Yuri Gagarin in no doubt that the great city had never had a more welcome visitor. The spaceman is a natural if ever there was one. No wonder millions fell for him. The amalgamated union of foundry workers made him number one honorary member and gave him a gold medal. Union President Fred Hollingsworth said all the members felt that Yuri was honouring them by his acceptance. In a way, he was one of them, because in his younger days, Gagarin worked as a moulder. Back in London, the Mansion House, where another hero's welcome awaited this amazing man. And it was raining there too. Yuri must have thought that all the jokes about a typical English summer were well founded. With the Lord Mayor, Sir Bernard Whaley Cohen, he waved to the thousands of city workers. Then to the tower, steeped in history going back to 1078. There was such a crush of children and holidaymakers that the men of space hardly had space to move. But there, as everywhere else, he seemed to be enjoying it all to the full. And what a contrast, the Tudor dress of the Beefeaters and the man who, three months ago, went into orbit round the Earth. The next call was at Admiralty House to see the Prime Minister. Mr Macmillan said, he's a delightful fellow, which just about sums up what everybody thought. Yuri had presented the Premier with an autographed book describing his flight in space. Buckingham Palace next day, the astronaut lunched with the Queen. Her Majesty, her ministers and all her subjects have been captivated by the charm of Major Yuri Gagarin. Never has Moscow sent a finer ambassador.
Russian Tu-104 touched down on London Airport. Among its passengers, one of the world's most famous men, Yuri Gagarin. His initials on the number plate made for the occasion. The man who won a place in history by going in orbit round the Earth came to London to visit the Soviet exhibition. Clapping in Russian fashion, he acknowledged the cheers. For the government, a Mr. Turnbull, secretary of the Minister of Science office, received Yuri, and in the crowd of Russian and other officials, the spaceman was at times almost lost to view. Only a little over three months ago, he was unknown. Now he is guaranteed a tremendous welcome anywhere in the world. Occupying the seat of honor in a Rolls Royce, Gagarin was driven from the airport on his way to the Russian embassy. From Hammersmith onwards, the route was crowded with people eager to see and cheer. Yuri has had plenty of this sort of thing in the past few weeks, but with a natural friendliness, he returned the greetings. At lunchtime, he arrived at Earl's Court for the exhibition. He was to meet the organizers there, and after lunch, hold a press conference. By this time, he could have had no doubt at all that the people of Britain have taken him to their heart. How popular was the announcement made about this time that the Queen had invited Yuri Gagarin to lunch on the following Friday? passenger arriving at London Airport was the woman who last June made 49 orbits of the Earth, Valentina Tereshkova. She was invited here to receive the gold medal of the British Interplanetary Society. Wherever she goes, the woman cosmonaut is ensured of a warm-hearted reception. Valentina made sure of her place in history when she demonstrated that woman is on equal terms with man in the conquest of space. At the Piccadilly Hotel, the medal was conferred. It signified that space and science are international and that men and women of all countries honor this great Russian.
presentation was made by the Society President, Dr. L. R. Shepard, an atomic physicist. Many men are destined to become famous in space exploration, but however many there be, the world will always remember Valentina. She won't be going up again for some time because she's expecting a baby, like so many of the best women. Russia's just wild about Yuri Gagarin, first man to conquer space. Modest, just a family man. It was no secret, either in Moscow or anywhere else, that Russia was ready to make the attempt. At 7 minutes past 7 a.m. our time, the 450-ton rocket went up. Russian diagrams to show how a previous space rocket functioned. It sheds stage one, then stage two, leaving the spaceship to go into orbit at 18,000 miles an hour. Gagarin was in radio contact with the ground. In his four and a half ton nose cone, he orbited once and was back again 108 minutes after takeoff. At Cape Canaveral, the Americans, though disappointed at not being first, are training these men to be astronauts and may still have a man on the moon before anyone else. How the intense heat on re-entering the atmosphere is withstood has been carefully studied. At 500 degrees Fahrenheit, one of the astronauts suffered no harm, though water boiled in the glass he held. Moscow prepared to give Major Gagarin a hero's welcome. Nobody talked or thought of anything else. Mr. Khrushchev interrupted his Black Sea holiday to be present. He gave Russia a toast to the man who has won immortal fame, the conqueror of space, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin.
seemed to be remembered. The entire Soviet nation in mourning, the world in sympathy. Yuri Gagarin, the first spaceman, was dead, killed in a plane crash. With him on that tragic flight was Vladimir Seregin, test pilot. Gagarin and his comrade were given a full military funeral. The Russian people, the Soviet chiefs of state and fellow cosmonauts paid their last respects. Gagarin's widow and children were comforted by spacewoman Valentina Tereshkova. Sadly and solemnly, the procession made its way to the Kremlin, where the ashes of the two heroes of the Soviet Union were to rest forever in the mighty walls. As the mourners said their silent goodbyes, the world remembered that wonderful day in April 1961 when Yuri Gagarin soared free of Earth for 108 glorious minutes. It was the greatest of all human adventures, beginning of a new chapter for mankind. Gagarin's name will never be forgotten.